Let's go to our flight prep classroom and begin with lesson one, aerodynamics. You'll notice that this lesson is similar to your private pilot course. That's because airplanes pretty much fly the same, whether you're a private pilot or a commercial pilot. All right, I'll see you in a bit. You should be very familiar with our first term. It's this shape right here. It is an airfoil. And an airfoil is simply a shape that has been designed to produce a useful reaction in the air. This useful reaction, one word, we call it lift. Now, what differentiates an airfoil from, say, a piece of plywood? Well, the airfoil has a cambered or curved surface right here. This curved surface, again, we call it a cambered surface. The camber, as you remember from your private pilot studies, is the amount of curvature something has, in this case, the upper and lower surfaces of the wing, right here. Now, this next term we call the chord line. And the chord line is the imaginary line that is drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing. Leading edge, trailing edge, and that line right through it, that's called our chord line. Now, notice here in this next graphic that the shape of the airfoil, such as lowering the flaps or deflecting the ailerons, changes the chord line. Now, this is important to remember. What we're really doing here when we lower the flaps is we're changing the camber of our wing. The greater the camber, the greater the lift. Notice our camber without flaps and our greater camber with the flaps. Okay, the next term we're going to talk about is for this little arrow popping up right here. It is the relative wind. Now, the relative wind is the wind that is being felt by the airfoil as it moves through the air or as the air moves over it. Now, the relative wind is always parallel to and is opposite the direction of flight. Notice that the aircraft here is traveling forward at a speed of about 160 knots. So, the chord line is shown by this line right here. Now, notice that the relative wind is shown by this arrow and they are moving in opposite directions but parallel to the direction of flight. Now our next term we have is for the angle of attack. And the angle of attack is nothing more than the angle that's measured between the chord line and the relative wind. Chord line, relative wind, hence our angle of attack. Now in the cockpit, you, the pilot, can control the angle of attack by manipulating the flight controls or by changes of the angle of attack. Changing the angle of attack changes the airplane's lift, airspeed, and drag. Let's go on. Now our last term is called the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is the angle between the cord line and the center line of the fuselage. We can see the angle of incidence right here. Cord line, fuselage, center line. Now, the angle of incidence is usually very small, and it's designed into the aircraft from the manufacturer. And unless you take your airplane apart, it cannot be changed or adjusted by the pilot. Time for the good old-fashioned FAA test question. Take a look at this. By changing the angle of attack of a wing, the pilot can control the airplane's A, lift, airspeed, and drag, B, lift, airspeed, and CG, center of gravity, or C, the lift, the airspeed, but not the drag? Your answer better be A. By changing the angle of attack of a wing, the pilot can control lift, airspeed, and drag.